Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway and K-State. Boy, it was an ugly performance on Sunday afternoon in Bramlage Coliseum. They lose 62-46 to to Nebraska. Not a great way to uh, start the holiday break for the K-State basketball team. And there's a lot to get to from this game. A lot of ugly, a lot of not good. I certainly will not be as positive as Tyler Perry was after the game. I think Tyler Perry's words were that um, there are still positives to take away from this game and there's no reason to be negative, something to that effect, which I don't think that's the right tone after this game. I understand trying to remain positive and not just completely dog your team and you know want to be too down in the dumps, but you know when you play – bad basketball or bad whatever and you just are terrible it's okay to admit that you know like Jerome Tang went in and said Nebraska just kicked our butts that is true on the scoreboard Nebraska kicked K-State's butts on the offensive boards they kicked K-State's butts K-State kind of kicked their own butt today though K-State had bad shot attempts they did not play smart they played with a lack of effort, certainly on the offensive glass at least. It just was not very good all around for them. And I just I don't know if it's a lack of taking accountability after a loss and just trying to remain overly positive or what it is, but this was a bad game for K-State, and it's okay to admit that. And I just feel like we didn't get enough of that after the game from Jerome Tang and Tyler Perry. Yeah, I mean, it, it's okay to call this a bad game as long as it's a one-off because it, it, this is something that can't continue to happen. And the, the thing that I think bothered me the most about this entire game wasn't even the scoring and the lack or the lack thereof of scoring, but it, it just looked like the, the rebounding effort on the defensive end in the second half just wasn't there. I think in the first five minutes, Nebraska already had 12 rebounds to k State's three. Uh, Jawan Gary had almost as many rebounds in the second half as K-State had in the second half. It was just one of those games where it looked like they, they just weren't very connected defensively. And, I mean, part of it, Jerome Ting uh, said at the press conference, was the scheme that Nebraska had with K-State switching. But half of rebounding is just effort. Yeah. And, and when, when you're playing hard, the ball finds you. I, I told you that a few times today where the ball took a weird bounce and it just went right into a Nebraska player's hands. But when you're playing hard, the ball will find you. K-State wasn't the first to the floor today. They weren't boxing out well. They got caught ball watching a few times. It says a lot of how Nebraska played today that when they were up 17 points with 40 seconds to go, K-State had a fast break. Nebraska bats, bats a pass away and dives on the floor to try and get it. It was just one of those games where one team looked like they just wanted it more. And I like what you said about it's okay to say that you play bad as long as you know you, it doesn't happen again. I think that's the thing is good teams play bad games. And we don't know if K-State's a good team or a bad team yet. I really don't think we know that. I think this team wavers back and forth. And D1 and I talked about it this week. You know, at this team's peak, this is a team that could probably be a, you know, sixth seed in the NCAA tournament, something like that. But they've also had quite a few performances at this point in the season now that makes you go, this looks more like an NIT team than an NCAA tournament team. And now there's a lot of season left, and obviously Big 12 play can turn things around, but – as I've pointed out with this team's schedule this year, if you drop too many in the non-con, you set yourself up to have to do some major work when it comes to conference play. And K-State's near in that territory where the USC loss certainly isn't as good as it once was. USC is struggling right now. Miami has dropped towards the bottom of the top 25. I think they'll ultimately be fine. That won't kill you. This Nebraska loss ultimately... I don't know what to make this Nebraska team, but it's not going to be anything special for you at the end. And now you got to make sure you take care of business against Wichita State. And I was going to write off Chicago State, but you probably shouldn't do that because Chicago State had themselves a heck of a week. And we know that K-State doesn't always put away bad teams here in Bramlage. So this team has to get on it pretty quick and get some things flipped around, moving in the right direction. And I think that you have to be able to go out and determine how you're going to respond from this. And I... I just think if you're watching this game over, if you're Jerome Tang and the staff, you're either going to have to come to the conclusion, do we not play smart or do we play lazy today? I think it has to be one of those two for the reason why K-State lost this game. And 
if you if you can't decide that it's either of them, then that's also a problem. And I, you know, people are probably going to be upset about how negative I seem after this, but this was one of the most embarrassing moments that I can remember in Bramlage Coliseum, at least in my lifetime. The fact that as the game was ending, you have a very loud "Go Big Red" chant going throughout Bramlage as K State is just getting swatted all over the place by Nebraska. I can't even remember a KU game. I've, I've never heard a rock chalk chant that loud here in Bramlage, and you're going to let Nebraska do it. So I guess credit to you know Nebraska football for being so bad that Nebraska fans care about basketball now. Um, but this was not good for K-State today. And on the player side, I don't know that I can even really find a player individually that I said, oh, that was actually a positive performance, though. I think they all just equally played a bad game, and I'll chalk that up to, like you said earlier, Bad game, maybe not a bad team, but they've got some bad team characteristics, and they need to address those and get those figured out pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, last year's team got their butts kicked by Butler, but I think that we felt a little differently because even though the schedule was a little bit softer, you could see flashes. And with this KC team, we're still really kind of looking for more consistent flashes. Like, you, you, you haven't gotten that yet this year. Like, the, the Villanova game was good. The LSU game was good. But what makes this performance just more head-scratching is last week was probably the more acceptable time with everything else going on off the court to come out and just have a yes. dud, where, where today it doesn't really make sense. And, and especially because the first half, where, where most of my issue with this game comes from is effort. And the first half, I thought KC played really hard. The second half, it looked like they came out of the locker room and just didn't care. And, and that's, that's the concerning part going forward. And, and especially on the offensive end, it, it was kind of every man for themselves, and they were very disconnected on offense. I, I think that you could probably count on two hands out of the 60 or out of the 60 shots, out of the 60 shots K-State took, you could probably count on two hands how many of those were actually good shots. And that, that, that's not a good sign yeah, in an offense where you have 60 shots. That, because both teams shot, I think, worse than we expected coming in. But it's not like they were getting great shots. And Nebraska was constantly getting great looks. And, and they were missing good looks, too. Yeah. The, I mean, this is, and this is one of those things where in the first half, K-State, they were taking bad shots then that if they had maybe avoided those. I mean, Will McNair and David Gasson took too many threes in this game. I think the, the total was three. It no, no reason for that. The one that was the most unforgivable was David Gasson taking a three early in a possession after Tyler Perry had basically stolen a possession for K-State. This K-State team probably could have been up double digits at halftime if they had just been smarter in the first half. And that's why I tend to think that, you know, it was a, more of a basketball IQ thing, which I, I've all season. I just don't think this team has it right now. I asked Jerome Tang about it after the game. He didn't really want to answer that question, which I understand. It's a tough spot, and you don't want to throw your guys under the bus publicly. But there are some serious things that this team has to address, and they have to do it by Thursday because, look, Wichita State is not a – good basketball team but they're not a bad one they're they've, capable they're capable they've got a good coach and paul mills and you know I, I think ticket sales went pretty well for the game up in kansas city and t-mobile center but you never know what you're going to get from a crowd coming off a performance like this one because like you said with the butler game last year difference was they just came back from a long layoff from their holiday tournament so they immediately had to go back on the road you're playing at butler it just it, weird environment and everything there seemed to not be much of a reason for this one. Yes, you had eight days off from your last game, but you had a great crowd in Bramlage for a Sunday afternoon when the Chiefs were playing and there's a ton of NFL going on. And a crowd that obviously showed up because they wanted to support Jerome Tang with everybody that was here afterwards for his post-game press conference on the radio. Like, this was an opportunity. And Jerome Tang also said that he didn't think it was a lack of motivation or effort. He thought his team had that. So going into the game at least. So I don't know what to make of this for K-State. Um, all I know is it just the warning signs that we've seen at points this season chalked up to a 62-46 to loss to Nebraska today. It's, it's not excusable. That's an issue. they got to address it. This team is far from done, though. Like I, I want people to, to get this, even in my negativity and the hate that you may have for me by saying what I've said today. Their, their ceiling is still high. The ceiling is still high. And this team will not be a complete product, and they should not be fully judged until we get basically a month of Big 12 play under the belts of everybody. But it's not looking good right now, and 
it's just kind of disappointing how this team has had stretches this season where you bring everybody on board and then you do something, you go, I'm, I'm off. And then once everybody's back on, you do it again. So we'll see how it looks moving forward for K-State, but Wichita State's up next. I'll also add in it's concerning how the game ended because did, I don't know if you realize this, Nebraska didn't score in the last five minutes and still won by 16. So that, that is concerning going forward. The fact that K-State only scored 12 points in the second half is concerning going forward. But it, it's – it's it can be okay if it's just one game, and I I think that people need to realize that too. But this is all of the warning signs that we kind of saw in the Oral Roberts game, the Central Arkansas game, where they just flipped gears against a capable team. You can't just flip a gear like that and expect to come out and win. Yeah. Yep. Not a great showing for the Cats. We'll see how things look come Thursday against Wichita State. Uh, if you think I'm negative and not a fun person to listen after this game. Wait until Thursday if something bad goes down there, uh, as everybody kind of knows my distaste for the Shockers. But K-State loses 62-46 to to Nebraska today. They did not shoot it well at all. They were 4 of 30 from 3. That's less than 14%. They were 0 of 12 in the second half, and nobody really showed up offensively. We thought we were going to get a breakout for Tyler Perry. He started off hot cooled off in a pretty big way. Arthur Kaluma did not have a good game after he's been on this hot streak and it looked like he was taking over as your number one. I just I think the best way to sum it up, and this will be the last thing I say, right now this team can be a really good team when they play at their best, but they don't have enough of the high-end players to go out and guarantee they will give you their best and be able to play a better level of basketball consistently you're going to have a lot of games like this this year from this team and it's going to just depend on if you get the right type of wins to be able to get into the NCAA tournament so they're a high ceiling low floor kind of team yes. and I think that we're, we're kind of seeing that right now yep so we'll see how it goes and uh, hopefully everything is a lot cheerier come Thursday because it's it would be one nasty 11-day layoff if K-State's coming off losses to Nebraska and Wichita State so for Drew Galloway I'm Mason Voth Thank you for watching K-State Online. We will be back with full coverage throughout this coming week with football, basketball, whatever it may be, keeping you informed on the Wildcats as they fall to Nebraska 62-46. to